What's up guys? It's your boy coming back with another video. This video we're gonna talk about brokers. Let's talk about the truth about a brokerage and how to start one and who needs a broker's authority. And it starts now. <laughs> What's up guys? It's your boy coming back with another video. What is a broker's authority? Who needs a broker's authority? Well, we're not going to go by Facebook or YouTube. We're going to go by what FMCSA says. And it's right here. Front of my noodle. It should be. If I did my job, it's right here. If you arrange transport for monetary Harry game you need a broker's authority it doesn't say who you work for it doesn't say who touches the money it says if you arrange transport of the freight if you in are in charge of where that freight goes if I give you a load and you can pick one of two different companies you're a broker if you have your own authority and you have five trucks, now you're a dispatcher. If you have no trucks, and like if you have if you don't have your own authority, but you dispatch for multiple companies, you're a broker. A bona fide agent works for a trucking company. It's in there every day operation you as a dispatcher are not in my everyday operation if I choose I don't like your load and I take my own load so you're not in my operation that day if you come and clock in for me clock out for me and arrange my transportation you're my dispatcher because that's a bona fide agent but anyway what do you need to do to get a broker's authority? You need an EIN for your business. I refuse to work for somebody who doesn't have an EIN, who does not have an LLC. If you can't tell me how to start a business, well, you can tell me how to run it. Because you watched a couple videos on dispatching so now you're going to pull up this load board. You're going to see a $300 load and you're going to give it to me. Right? You don't even know how the boat board works. But you're a super dispatcher. File for an LLC in the state of your choice. You don't have to file for it in your state. Now, I know I said LLC. Talk, talk to your CPA. You may want an LLC, you may be a sole prop, you may be, you may have partners, you may be a corporation. Who am I to tell you about your financial life? Only you and a CPA know, knows what's really going on. Now you need to get your business license. You need to get your business license in order to do business. You can't run a business with no license. You can't even pedal hot dogs on the corner with no license. But yet, you're going to be in charge of my truck with no license, no authority, no nothing. Alright, so now to the meat and potatoes of how to start a brokerage. The true cost of a brokerage. The true headaches of a brokerage. You apply for your US DOT number. You got to have a DOT number. And then you need to register with the FMCSA for an OP-1 application for motor proper carrier and broker authority to receive your MC or your FF number. And that application, by the way, is $300. Now you need insurance. It's called a surety bond. Surety bond of $75,000 
is based on your credit and your background. And this is in case the shipper doesn't pay you as a broker, you still need to pay the carrier. You're still responsible for that contract you signed with that carrier. So, how much is a $75,000 secure surety bond? Depends on your credit. Could be 1800, could be 10 Gs. I got a buddy who's got a buddy who's got a buddy who's got a buddy. Not really, it's a buddy um, went in with somebody. And they have a brokerage. This guy's at 830 credit score or something like that. Cost him $7,500 for the surety bond. With an 830 credit score. It's based on how long you've been in business and, you know, a couple other things. Um, then you need to designate a processing agent. What this processing agent does is they can they can represent your company pretty much like a power of attorney and they re can receive legal documentation in case you're in legal action. And then and only then do you receive your license for a brokerage. The day you receive that license is the day you can start chasing loads. Do you know where to get them from? I hope so. Because you just put a lot of money and a lot of faith into what somebody said. You chased your dream. But re what research did you do? What do you truly know about this brokerage or trucking in general did you have a 9 to 5 last week as a barista or as a salesman like your boy Hotshot then now all of a sudden you're a broker right now all of a sudden you are in charge of a trucking company now all of a sudden you have people's life in your hands their livelihood And you have no experience. Because pure greed puts you there. No other reason did you decide to do that without any proper training. You know, if you're going to be a dispatcher or a broker, please, 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 please learn the business. Now, for all you dispatchers, I want to ask you a question. You work for multiple carriers because you're a dispatcher. What if carrier A don't pay you? You don't have nothing to back you up. 90% of dispatchers don't even do contracts. Hey, you're looking for a dispatcher? Yeah, I'm thinking about it. I, well, I can dispatch you. All right, I got a three-car wedge and a Ram 5500. All right, I'll start right now. Start looking for loads. You're not even bound by nothing. So, who's going to pay? Like, what if you don't get paid? And the reason all this started... Is back when the surety bonds came alive, like required, you had brokers who said they weren't brokers, they were dispatchers. Oh, I work for you as a dispatcher. Well, and then there was a court case and the lawyers and the court, federal court, Told this dispatcher twice that you need to have a broker's authority for this. One time they lost the case and lost money because they didn't have it. 
this dispatching company didn't get paid because they didn't have the proper authority. Just because someone's doing it doesn't mean it's right. I knew guys that got high for 15 years. Who went out and partied, shot people and all that. And they're living to tell about it. Does that mean I should go do it? No. Alright, but... What is a broker? And what is... Dispatcher? Dispatcher is a bona fide agent working for a single trucking company. You're in charge of my fleet, my trucks, getting my company loads. And I know everybody says, oh, the, the conflict of interest doesn't exist. In the land of the law, it does. If you choose who, what carrier takes that freight, you're a broker. I work for four trucking companies. I have a load. Who do I give it to? And you're gonna say, well, whoever's close. You just made that decision. You decided on that broker, on that carrier, I'm sorry. If you had $150,000 into a trucking company. Are you going to let some random person in charge of your company? And I know what people say. Well, you don't make money unless I make money. Okay? So, you found me a $1,000 load. I want a $1,200 load. You get 10%. How hard and how long are you going to work for $20? You're going to say there isn't anything else and try to get me and force me to take that $20 load. So you really don't have my best interest in mind. You have yours because now, because you need to get me loaded and you need to move on to the other truck so you can make money. Not so I can maximize my gross, so you can maximize your gross. Because you need multiple trucks. Because dispatching pays no money, but yet you want to do it. If I knew I wasn't going to make no money, if I knew I was going to complain about my pay, I wouldn't be doing it. So... What's the difference between, let's say dispatching is legal. Let's just say, because it's not gonna stop today. They're gonna keep doing it. And people are gonna keep paying for it. And there's even di people calling themselves dispatchers, acting as brokers. They're getting paid, the checks are coming to them. It's going in their bank account and you're waiting on a check from them. That there is a pure broker illegal and you're probably getting screwed and I guarantee they're double dipping so a dispatcher is legal what is the difference between a freight dispatcher and a car dispatcher well a car dispatcher he needs to be on your truck all the time especially you haul three or four cars. He needs to be worried about tomorrow. As a freight broker or dispatcher, usually the loads are on the truck two or three days. Loads on, a car's on my truck for 12 hours. Now, I'm exaggerating. Maybe 24, maybe. So, they have to be there all the time. But what do dispatchers want to do? What do brokers want to do? They want to go sit by the pool with their lady 
and look for loads for two hours or an hour, take the first one that pops up, dispatch it to you, close your computer, drink a margarita, and, and you're out there working. And you don't know that them shutting it down early and taking that load just cost you 500 bucks because they don't work at the prime time of the load board. You need to be on there in the morning. And then you got the the uh, lunchtime shuffle, 11 to 12 o'clock shuffle. What that is, is the loads that have to be picked up tomorrow, now they're pushing to get them booked. Now they're throwing extra money around noon for tomorrow or even the day after. They just need them off the books. They need them covered. But no. By 10 o'clock, you were booked. The computer's closed. You're working. And they're telling you, oh yeah, I'm working on it. Yeah, they're working on it. It's not that I hate dispatchers. I don't. I, I don't knock anybody for their hustle. I just... I have a problem with a hundred and thirty thousand dollar bit like truck being ran by somebody that doesn't understand and why do you guys think why do people think you need a dispatcher facebook youtube that's it because you're starting a business and trying to take the easy way out how do you know if you're getting a good load if you don't even know how to load your truck? How do you know what's really the rate? You've never loaded it. You've never even called on one car. There are so many drivers and business owners that cannot book a load. Well, guess what? You may be hiring a dispatcher never's booked the load that is never booked the loop. And you will never know. You gotta vet these guys. And you're gonna hire someone with no skin in the game. I tried a dispatcher one time. They'd be on the load board. 10.30. Take their kid to school. Get up. Get wifey to work. Make breakfast. Make coffee. Oh, 10 o'clock, they're ready to get on the load board. Load board start hopping at 7 Eastern time. So if you're Pacific, you need to be on that at 5 a.m. And then you need to be on it later because Pacific's running until about 8 their time. Guys, it's, dispatching and brokering is not a game. That is the core of your business, and it's an art. And I'm not saying there's not good people out there that can do it. Absolutely not. There is some of the best are out there. But they work Monday through Friday, 12 hours a day. Sometimes Saturday and Sunday. They're not in it to do minimal work. They don't do it and work on another project. You know? But I'm starting to ramble now. I mean, y'all already know what I think about dispatching. And I just, just want you guys to realize what you're really doing. Get with somebody that knows. Get with an experienced trucker, an experienced business owner, with a successful running truck. Get mentored. You know? So, all right, guys. That's what a broker authority is. That's how you get one. You're seeing who needs one. This is why, and that is why you need to be very, very careful with who is in charge of your company. 
you put blood, sweat, and tears for a $10 an hour CEO. Hmm. Or a COO. They're in charge of your business whether you like it or not. Oh, well, I get the final call. Yeah, until they say there's nothing else on the board. I can get you $1,000. That's the best we can do. And then when you get over to Denver, we'll get you more money. Ain't no money in Denver. So, if you got four or five trucks, hire a dispatcher. It works for you. Solely for you. If you got one truck, learn how to maximize your costs. In this day and age with this market, you need to cut out all costs. And 10% for a couple phone calls, it's a lot of money. 5G's is 500 bucks. 300 bucks, three grand. Or 300, I'm sorry. Well, whatever, you know what I mean. That's a day's fuel. Anyway, enough's enough of that hot shot. So. All right, guys, you know what it is. Put in the comments who dispatches your truck or who's going to dispatch your truck. So make sure you know where you're getting your information from. Make sure they have produced proof of why, what value do they have to tell you this? What's their rapport? What's their channel? Their channel got information that you just, that blows your mind away? Is their channel the same video every day? Uh, I mean, it's, is their channel a goofy guy doing backflips off a Dodge Ram? I don't know. <laughs> so, all right guys, it's your boy Hot Shot. Like, share, subscribe. Hit that ding ding. And I will see you tomorrow. Peace.